Good morning and welcome to our program, News You Can Use, Part One, An Introduction to North Carolina Newspapers. I am Francesca Perez Evans, the Community Engagement Librarian with the SLNC Government and Heritage Library. I will be your host and moderator for today's event. Please visit the State Library of North Carolina's website to learn more about the library's collection and services. You will find a link to our website in the chat box. Once the presentation has ended, we will send you a follow-up email with a list of resources mentioned in today's program. The presentation will also be recorded and made available online. Captioning will be available for this presentation. To view captioning in this platform, please use your mouse to hover over the control toolbar on the top or bottom of the screen and click on the closed caption button. Second, select either show subtitle or view full transcript to see captions during the presentation. To make any changes to the captioning settings, click on the closed caption button and select the subtitle settings option. A settings box will appear. Click on the accessibility button and make any changes as you see fit. Finally, on the same toolbar, click on the chat button to bring up the chat box. Please send a message to our team if you need technical help or would like to add any questions for the presenters to answer at the end of the presentation. Next, we also, also ask everyone to please keep their sound on mute. Before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to ask you all to take a very short webinar experience survey following today's presentation. We are sharing the link in the chat now and we'll share it at the end as well. Your experience with today's webinar is very important to us and we use participant feedback to help us improve presentations and educational events. Without fur further ado, please let me introduce you to our speakers. Kelly Agan is the Reference Services Supervisor at the State Library of North Carolina's Government and Heritage Library. She coordinates the library's public and reference services and manages a group of dedicated and curious librarians who love helping people with North Carolina history research. She also helps coordinate library outreach and educational events like today's webinar. Kelly has a background in public history and education, and she received her master's in library science from the University of North Carolina. She looks forward to meeting you and helping you in your research journey. Taylor Thompson is a reference services assistant at the SLNC Government and Heritage Library. She holds a bachelor's degree in history from Roanoke College and is currently working towards her master's in library and information science from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Her research interests include women's history, US history, and early 20th century history. She enjoys learning about the rich heritage of North Carolina and hopes to inspire others to make new discoveries and research. To get us started with our News You Can Use Part One, an introduction to North Carolina newspapers presentation, please welcome Kelly Aiken. Good morning, and thank you all again for joining us today. We have a handout for you for today's program with the key resources and links that we're going to be talking about. The link is being shared in chat right now. And we also want you to know that we'll be sharing links to similar resources that we discuss as we go along. So don't feel worried about writing everything down. So as librarians, practically nothing gets us more excited than the opportunity to take out some weighty and dusty old volumes of old bound newspapers. Open up a volume and you instantly enter a different world and place and time. 
There isn't a day that goes by that either staff or library researchers here in the library aren't digging into the published record for information about the past. Newspapers are an important historical source as they contain evidence often published on a daily basis of events large and small, of business and commerce, art and literature, fashion, education, gender and race, and a host of other historical and sociological information. Millions of pages of print newspapers have come off the presses since the first American newspapers were published in Boston just around the turn of the 18th century. Some of these survive only in history's memory, others survive in personal and institutional collections like libraries and archives. Some have been preserved in microfilm and a growing portion have been digitized. And for those that are available online, some are freely available and others available only through paid subscription access. Yet there is no single definitive source that tells us all the papers that have existed or that survive today. So how do you make sense of this complicated landscape to know what newspapers are out there, how to access them, and how to use them in your research? Our goal as librarians is to make you successful in your research. And our goal today is to help you start to make sense of this world for North Carolina newspapers, both historical and contemporary. So today, we will introduce you to a short history of the state's newspapers. Next, we'll give an overview of the research value of newspapers. Then we'll share some key research tips and tools to help you identify and locate papers and the collections where they live. We'll cover essentials relating to newspapers in print and on microfilm, and we'll share the collections that we hold here at the SLNC Government Heritage Library. We'll follow this with a tour of where you can find and access North Carolina newspapers online, and then we'll finish up with a quick introduction to our library's resources and services. Today's introduction to North Carolina newspapers is part of our three-part News You Can Use series. At the end of the presentation, we'll give you more information about part two and part three coming up in the next few weeks. And then we'll leave some time for your questions and we hope that you'll have some for us. Excuse me. Let's start with a little bit of history. As librarians, we like to share historical context when we talk about locating and using historical records because having this background helps us be more effective as history detectives. Having an understanding or a perspective of the political, social, economic, governmental, and geographic conditions of a particular era or surrounding a particular event really helps us to understand what types of evidence or records were created. For newspapers, historical context helps us be aware of the factors that influenced where and when newspapers were created, the types of information we might be able to find for a particular moment in time, and where we might be likely to find a particular newspaper saved today. And so the more you know, the more you can uncover. In the early part of the 18th century, papers were required to be published by government authority and with a license. In fact, if you look at these early broadsides, you'll see the quote published with authority often below the title. During this era, newspaper publishers were printers first and they were found really only in the largest cities. They were licensed by authority to print official government documents and papers among other items for the public like books, pamphlets, and so forth. The business of creating news was secondary to the business of printing in the early days. Paper was also a valuable commodity and most people never had access to it. The broadsides were small in size and only one to two pages at most. They included news from England that was cribbed from the British papers, along with portions of religious or literary texts, hopefully to edify their readers. By the 1750s, papers had begun to operate independently from the British government authority and the numbers had increased significantly. The news had become much more local and political and political debates raged in the newspapers. By this time, papers had grown to include, excuse me, include a range of advertisements, social news, and opinion. And to give you an idea what a printing press of the day looked like, this slide shows a photograph of a park ranger at the Franklin Court Printing Office in Philadelphia, giving a demonstration of inking the type on an 18th century press. So with that, let's turn to North Carolina. North Carolina, along with a few other colonies, relate to the printing and newspaper party. This delay was influenced by geography, settlement, and politics. Founded in 1663, the Carolina colony had few natural good harbors compared to the busy ports of Virginia to the north and Charleston to the south, and it had a very dangerous coastline. 
The first settlers moved south from the Tidewater area of Virginia across the formidable Dismal Swamp and into the upper northeastern part of what is now North Carolina. The image on this slide shows a map of the state from 1799. The tiny yellow pin in the upper right corner sits over the Great Dismal Swamp. And for further reference, the big pin represents New Bern, one of Carolina's, North Carolina's earliest towns. Bath, which was the colony's first port of entry and incorporated town in 1705, sits just, in time, just inside the tiny circle over the larger pin for New Bern. The earliest settlement in towns were near the coast where there was access to the few large and navigable rivers that opened into the Atlantic, the Noose at New Bern, the Pamlico at Bath, and the Cape Fear at Wilmington. North Carolina was still wilderness and backcountry, and it remained so into the first decades of the 19th century. So really there was very little impetus for a printer or a newspaper. The first printing press made its way to North Carolina in 1746. It arrived at New Bern just a few years after the town was established as the capital. It was brought by James Davis who came from Virginia. He was already a successful printer and he came at the invitation of the General Assembly to shut up, excuse me, to set up shop as the colony's first printer and printer to the assembly. In August of 1751, Davis published the colony's first broadside, the North Carolina Gazette. And you'll note from the image on this slide, one of the earliest editions, that the R in North was conspicuously absent, at least to us modern readers. The paper was small and the standard of the day, originally one page and printed as a monthly. The Gazette had four or so incarnations and slight name changes through about 1798, and by 1776, there were at least three papers in the colony, although all the papers had shut down by the end of the revolution. The state had no paper from 1778 to 1783, but publishing picked up again in earnest following the Revolutionary War. This slide shows locations of North Carolina's earliest colonial and early federal era papers. The big yellow pin again represents New Bern with Davis's North Carolina Gazette established in 1751. Wilmington farthest south with a white pin and at the mouth of the Cape Fear established the North Carolina Gazette in 1764. Next came Hillsborough's first paper, the Gazette in 1765. And this was the back country's first paper. Next came, <coughs> excuse me, um, and Hillsborough is actually the white pin that's, very, that's in the middle and very close to the Virginia border. Um, the Cape Fear Mercury was established at Edenton in 1769. This is the white pin farthest to the east. And then next came Fayetteville up the Cape Fear from Wilmington with the Gazette in 1789. And you can see that they weren't particularly um, imaginative in their titles. Um, lots of Gazettes. Halifax, the smaller yellow pin way up at the top by Virginia, published the Halifax Journal in 1792. And finally, Salisbury, the smaller yellow pin farthest west in 1797 with the North Carolina Mercury and the Salisbury Advertiser. Growth of papers into the interior of the state came as settlers began to push west. So when you think about finding localized newspapers and content for North Carolina, think about the history of settlement and development and what may have been likely to exist at a given time and in a given location. The images on the left of this slide show the mastheads of a few of the editions of these earliest papers, just to give you an idea what they looked like. The two small black pins show the sites of what would become the state's two largest historical and modern day papers. These would be Raleigh in the smack in the middle of the state and northeast of Fayetteville and southwest, uh, excuse me, southwest of Hillsboro and then Charlotte, which is um, farthest west, southwest of Hillsborough, excuse me, Salisbury. Raleigh's newspaper history began around 1797 to 1799 with publication of three papers, the Raleigh Register and North Carolina Weekly Advertiser, the Weekly News, and then the Raleigh Minerva. This slide shows one of the earliest editions of the register that I digitized from the State Library's old bound volumes. The paper was about 11 and a half inches wide by about 16 and a half tall. Into the 19th century, the state saw rapid development in papers from both small towns and its smaller cities as the population continued to grow and expand. The 19th century also saw a range of politically affiliated papers, including the major papers of the Republican and Whig parties and later the Democratic Party. 
Politically affiliated papers would figure prominently in the political wars of the 19th century. Another interesting development came with papers geared toward the modern family with Charlotte's Western Democrat. And there's an example of that on this page from 1870. Papers began to feature content geared toward women and domestic life. And incidentally, this issue of the paper from 1870 also included election returns for Mecklenburg County elections. Development of the newspaper landscape included a range of specialized presses for agriculture, industry, labor, as well as infrastructure, ad, excuse me, advocacy associations, such as those related to good roads. The images on this slide show examples of labor and industrial presses, Raleigh's Farmer and Mechanic from 1882 and Charlotte's Miners and Farmers Journal in September of 1820. Growth of population, municipalities, and industry spurred the state's educational system. And the, with the growth of secondary education, normal schools, colleges, and universities came school and campus newspapers as well. Numerous examples of these papers from the latter quarter of the 19th century to the present day have been preserved. This slide shows just a few examples. One from Berea High School in Granville County from 1877, another from Lewisburg College in 1908, and one from the Orange Echo at Lincoln High School in Chapel Hill from 1944. Lincoln High School was the town's black high school during the era of segregation in the South. A number of papers have also been published from the state's American Indian communities. These have included the Cherokee One Feather, which is the official paper of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Nation in North Carolina and was founded in 1966. The Carolina Indian Voice, published in Pembroke by the Lumbee Tribe, was founded in 1973 by Bruce Barton. The One Feather is still in publication today, and the paper also has a crucial publication platform on the web. I'd like to turn for a few minutes to the history of the state's African American newspapers. Consulting a few different resources, which you'll hear more about in the next part of our presentation, I found nearly 100 African American community papers that have been published in the state since the 1860s. The first published just after the Civil War in 1865 was the Journal of Freedom and this was published in Raleigh. It's not clear how many issues the paper saw, only a handful appear to have survived. The National Savings Bank carrying financial news and news of the Freedmen's Savings Banks was published in 1868. Other Reconstruction and post-Reconstruction era 19th century papers included Fayetteville's The Educator, Raleigh's African Expositor, New Bern's The People's Advocate, Will Wilmington's Afro-American Presbyterian, and Alex and Frank Manley's Wilmington Record published in the 1890s until 1898. Numerous papers were published beginning in the 20th century. These included the Carolina Times from Durham, which was founded in 1921 by Charles Arendt, as the standard advertiser and was later run by Lewis Austin. Lewis Austin used the paper to target discrimination and fight for civil rights. At one point, the Times served as the headquarters of the Durham Committee on Negro Affairs, later to become the Durham Committee on the Affairs of Black People. Charlotte's The Post, founded in 1878, is still in publication today. This slide shows images of the front page of a few of these historical publications, along with a snapshot of the masthead of black ink the Black student newspaper at UNC Chapel Hill from 1969. So there's probably no other published source than newspapers that contain a wider range of information and topics related to daily life, events, culture, and community history than newspapers. This has just given you a, the briefest of glimpses into the extent of the state's newspaper history and the types of community and special interests present presses that have existed. There are many others that we haven't had a chance to touch on, including the range of religious newspapers, more on political presses and community support and advocacy groups. But we hope that the tools and resources that you'll learn about next will help you begin to explore some of these resources. I'll now turn it over to Taylor, who will talk about the research value of newspapers and share essential tools that we use here in the library every day to help us locate and access them. 
All right, thank you. And hello, everyone. So Kelly did a great job pointing out that for centuries, newspapers have been crucial in helping us to learn about events in our world. And they not only provide us with news that's applicable to us today, but they can also be a wealth of information about the past, making them an essential tool for researchers and genealogists. So looking back into historical newspapers can give us a snapshot into what events and stories were important for public knowledge at a particular time, and also might give us insight into what the community of paper served may have been. Newspapers can be vital and innovative resources that can help us provide avenues for a variety of research projects. So let's take some time to consider the research value of newspapers and explore a few different types of research projects that can be enhanced through looking at newspapers. So one of the most prominent types of research that newspapers can be useful for is historical research. Looking at archive past newspaper issues can help us to learn about events and stories as they develop, as well as their outcomes after those events have occurred. We can also look at a variety of newspaper articles on a particular topic to gain different perspectives. Newspaper articles can sometimes contain firsthand primary accounts of information or secondhand after the fact analyses of events. Reading historical newspaper articles can often give you detailed insight on the topic you're researching that you might not necessarily find in a generalized book or journal article. Looking at newspapers as a whole, they can reveal a lot of historical context. For example, what stories were thought to be the most important at the time and shared on the front page? What events were reported to be going on in a particular community? Sometimes election results can be reported in papers for political research. Advertisements can reveal what products and fashions were available, as well as a glimpse into the cultural ideologies of the time. Newspapers can also be a helpful resource for genealogical and family history research. even those who are um, researching a particular individual. Famous people are usually easy to find being reported about in newspapers, but they can also help us learn bits and pieces about the lives of everyday people too. Often obituaries can be especially helpful to find since they give an overview of a person's life, but sometimes their social activities, key life events, and pieces of their life story may also be found in newspaper articles and social pages, Remember, newspapers were essentially the social media of the past. Articles about events may indicate that a person attended, or they might feature a quote stated by them or their photograph. Birth and marriage announcements, death notices, and obituaries can be helpful substitutes for vital records if you're struggling to locate one. Newspapers can also be useful for business research. Sometimes researchers may be interested in uh, historical business and want to know more about its history, maybe its location over time, the years that it was in business, etc. Contemporary and historical newspapers feature a plethora of advertisements, job postings, help wanted pages, articles that can help us piece together these histories. For example, one time we actually received a question here at the library um, from someone who was curious about when a particular trucking company um, was in business in North Carolina. And so several of my reference colleagues and I teamed up together and we searched different newspaper databases for different time periods to see if we could find the company mentioned. And ultimately we did. Uh, we found classified ads that had job postings for the company. So we had an idea of when it was in operation. We also found obituaries for some of the executives and even articles about the news uh, about the company merging with another company. And so we got an idea of the um, company name change over time. So in this case, the newspaper articles helped us to paint a more colorful picture of the company's history when we struggled to find mention of it in other public, published resources. Remember, these are just a few examples of some research projects that newspapers can be an avenue for finding information, but this is by no means an exhaustive list. The beauty of newspapers is that almost any topic can be reported on in them. So when you're considering your research question, think about if newspapers might be an interesting thing for you to investigate. You'll never know what information you'll be able to find until you look. So starting your research into the world of newspapers is exciting, but ultimately it can also be very intimidating. 
There are so many places to access newspapers, both in print and online, and you might stumble into a plethora of questions as you begin your search. For example, you might be wondering, how do I locate a, a paper from a specific time or location? Or you might know those details already and be wondering how you can access it. What North Carolina newspapers are available and where can we find them? How can I locate an article about a specific topic? And finally, what is available online? Throughout the presentation, Kelly and I are going to address strategies to help answer each of these questions. So to get started, let's discuss a few key uh, tips for newspaper research. So before looking at newspapers, it's essential to take some time to narrow your search. There's a lot out there in the newspaper world that can be confusing if you don't know when to, where to search or how to search. Overall, the more information you know about the topic that you're researching, the better. Try to do as much background research on your topic as you can before you dive in. One of the first things you'll want to do when searching for a newspaper is to try your best to locate the newspaper an article would have been published in. This will help you tremendously as you can focus on accessing one or a small selection of newspapers instead of getting lost in a sea of others. It will be important to take some time to learn the newspaper landscape of that area, or in other words, what newspapers historically were in print in a particular time and place. Also, think about the historical context of your research topic. Where do you think an article would have been published? What time frame would the news have been released? If you already know of a particular article that you're seeking, gather all of the information about it that you can, such as the name of the article, the name of the newspaper, uh, the date of publication, potential keywords in the article, an author if that applies. These will help you immensely as you begin searching newspapers. So now that our brains are ticking about what kinds of research projects newspapers might be able to help, what tools are out there for us to help us get started? So unfortunately, there's no one go-to resource for all newspaper content. So locating newspaper articles is going to be tricky as there are a variety of mediums to consider checking. Thankfully, there are some print and online resources that can help us. And all the tools that I'm gonna mention in this part of the presentation are available to everyone and they're freely accessible through the State Library of North Carolina's online resources page. So newspaper indexes can help you determine what newspapers may be in print historically and trace changes in paper means over time. There are a number of helpful newspaper indexes for North Carolina. And I know there's a lot of information on the slide, but don't worry, we're gonna go over each of these um, resources individually. So North Carolina, uh, the North Carolina Newspaper Index. It's a resource that was created by library staff in 2002, and it's an excellent starting point for researching North Carolina newspapers. It's completely digitized and consists of a PDF document that sorts newspaper titles in the state, um, first by county and then by town and or city. It gives a variety of information about the newspapers listed, including a date range of known editions and titles of papers in succession. So for example, it might let you know if a newspaper merged with another paper and give you a preceding or succeeding title. The Union List of North Carolina Newspapers from 1751 to 1900 is a 1963 publication of the North Carolina Historical Commission, and it compiles a listing of historical North Carolina papers alphabetically by town. So along with this listing, the years of each paper are, are the years each paper was published are defined and as well as a list of institutions that hold issues of the paper and more specifically what issues are held and what medium they're held in. This is almost like a pre-internet version of WorldCat if you're familiar with that source and that's an online international library catalog search tool and we'll talk more about that later. The U.S. newspaper directory from 1690 to the present is um, a Part of um, the Library, Cong Library of Congress's newspaper database chronicling America, and it contains information on how to access particular newspapers in print. It's similar to the Union List of North Carolina papers that we just talked about, but um, it also details additional historical information about newspapers. So you can search for newspapers in this index by state, county, city, date range, or keyword. And there are also some advanced search features too. So if you look in that red box in the slide, um, you can also search by ethnicity or labor press, material type, and language. 
On this slide, you'll see my results from when I did a search in the newspaper directory and pulled up the information on our particular newspaper, um, the Coastland Times from Manio, North Carolina. And so in the image on the left-hand side, you'll see the abundance of historical information I was able to find on the paper, such as its geographic coverage, coverage, its frequency. So was it a daily paper or a weekly paper? Um, common subjects that were covered as well. I also found a detailed history of the paper as I scrolled down um, about the newspaper. There also was a link to holdings of the paper, um, which leads you to a separate page where you can see where particular issues of the paper are located. The next tool we'll talk about are published abstracts and indexes of newspapers. More specifically, those abstracts and indexes in print and in the, the SLNC's News and Observer Index and ECU's North Carolina Periodicals Index. So abstracts and indexes are published books often created by professional researchers. So a researcher might go to an archive and look at original material and then create a book about what they find. So for example, someone might go look at historical issues of the Carolina Journal from 1800 to 1900, and maybe they're interested in just looking at the death notices that were printed in that paper in those issues. So an index would list the names of the individuals mentioned in that particular set of issues. And an abstract is similar to that index, but it might contain, um, it's gonna contain a little more detail. So maybe a summary of what the article said or some highlights from it. Abstracts and indexes are typically going to exist for older newspapers from the 18th and 19th centuries, but sometimes you can find them for more contemporary newspapers as well. And these can be extremely helpful resources to locate pertinent newspaper articles. Many libraries with genealogical or local history collections collect these abstracts and indexes in newspapers, and our library, the Government Heritage Library, is one of them. Um, we, you can search our library's catalog for um, the abstracts and indexes that we have, and also you can search other libraries' catalogs to see if they might have abstracts and indexes of newspapers that you're looking for. This slide shows just a few of the, our library's abstracts and indexes of newspapers, and as you can see, their content and their format vary widely. Another free resource available on our online resources page is the Raleigh News and Observer Index that covers 1926 to 1992. This is an online searchable index of articles in the NNO during this time period, though it is missing some years. This index was originally drawn up by librarians from our library pre-1977, and it was typed onto catalog cards, and then ultimately they transcribed it into a database. So remember that this resource is a database to help you find citations of articles, um, but it's not a database of the articles themselves. So from the citation, you're going to have to locate an outside source to get the paper and look at the relevant article. Remember also that when you're searching this um, index that you're gonna to have to think about the time period that the cards were created in. For example, terminology has changed in many cases. So if you're looking for perhaps handicapped, you might search under crippled. Also remember that the index is selective. Librarians selected which topics they thought were the most important to index. Other libraries might have a similar online index for um, other newspapers, such as ECU's North Carolina Periodicals Index, which contains 68 historical and current um, regional publications. So now that we have these new tools in our toolbox to help us search for newspapers, where do we access them? So today, many of us receive news through our computers and our smartphones and instantly turn to the web when we're searching for in information. But remember, not all newspapers are digitized. So some are gonna require other methods to access, access such as um, searching newspaper microfilm or traditional print newspapers. So let's begin by learning about how to access newspapers in their original format, print. Many libraries and archives keep collections of loose physical newspapers. These may vary widely depending on the institution that holds them. The papers collected can vary in terms of the titles and the years and the scope of the newspapers collected. Libraries may keep a collection of current historic um, local newspapers in print for public use if they have a subscription. 
the historical newspapers in print are going to be a little trickier to find because often they need preservation over time, but they can often be found in local history libraries, archives, and libraries that have a dedicated historical or genealogical collection. Newspapers often still exist in a bound format. So bound newspapers consist of a series of issues of print newspapers that have been bound together in a book. Though these collections often do not circulate, it might be worth a trip to a library or an archive near you to view that original material. You can often locate physical and bound newspapers within a library's catalog, or by asking the librarians if they have print holdings of newspapers and what they might entail. And remember that Union List of North Carolina Papers and that US newspaper directory that we looked at earlier can also help with this. Many newspapers have also been microfilmed, meaning that the physical papers have been taken and filmed onto small um, reels of film, the images of them. And these reels of film are called microfilm. Like bound newspapers, microfilm of newspapers contain several issues of a paper filmed one after another. So to view that newspaper microfilm, one additional piece of equipment that you're gonna need is a microfilm reader. Check with a library near you to see if they have one that you can use. Microfilm is a great way to preserve newspapers whose physical paper becomes fragile and disintegrates over time. As newspapers age, they might be microfilmed, allowing for images of the newspapers to survive, and ultimately the physical copies of the paper might not be, um, be disposed of. Um, so if you're looking for an older, say 18th century newspaper, there's a chance that it might exist only on microfilm. The small size, durability, and portability of microfilm reels allow for many libraries to circulate them on site and also through interlibrary loan. Finally, let's discuss some other miscellaneous tools that can help us in our newspaper research, including the North Carolina Newspaper Locator and WorldCat. So one specific tool that can help you in your search for newspaper microfilm is the North Carolina Newspaper Locator. Essentially, it's a database of all the newspaper microfilm pertaining to North Carolina that's housed in the Government and Heritage Library. So it's important to remember that it's not a search of all North Carolina microfilm of newspapers that exist, but it's only that which our library has here on site. So however, um, our collection of North Carolina microfilm is very extensive. We collect newspaper microfilm from across the state of North Carolina and throughout the state's history. If you click the drop down menu um, when you're searching on the, um, the newspaper locator, there is um, a variety of ways that you can search. We can search for newspaper microfilm by county, we can search by town, title, or a date range. So for example, we might be interested in what newspaper microfilm we have for Brunswick County. So we can search for that county and then we have an additional option to include a particular date range or a year. And the results um, will list the titles of the newspaper microfilm available here at the library, as well as the location the paper was based out of, notes on the paper, and dates of the earliest and latest issues we have on microfilm of the paper. And sometimes you might be searching a more generalized area that goes beyond county borders. So in some cases, when you search, a red expand search link will appear at the top of the page. And you can click that and you can see the results for surrounding towns and counties. So microfilm can also be located by searching library catalogs um, and WorldCat. WorldCat is an online international library catalog search that can help you find all sorts of items in libraries across the globe. So just like a regular library catalog, you can search for the material that you're looking for by typing in the search box. And then on the results page, you can click on a particular item and see all of the libraries listed as holding that item in their collection. You can even type in your zip code and WorldCat will show the libraries with the item um, that's closest to you at the top of the list. You can search for newspaper microfilm in WorldCat or even those abstracts and indexes that we were talking about earlier. We can also search for those in WorldCat too. Uh, print books can also be searched for in WorldCat. A pro of digitized online newspapers is that you gain text searchability, which you don't have with the print or microfilm newspaper collections. So if you struggle to find the newspaper you're finding online, though, it might be worth looking into those physical and microfilm collections um, in a library near you or maybe a library in the place that you're researching. 
don't overlook the value of print and microfilm collections of newspapers. Now I'm going to turn the presentation back over to Kelly, and she's going to talk to us more about online newspaper collections. Great. Thank you, Taylor. That, that was really a very helpful and fabulous overview of the research value of papers, as well as key strategies and tools. Again, that as librarians, we use these every day. And we hope that you've you found some that you can take away to add to your own toolkit. For the final part of today's talk, we're, we're going to look a little more closely at a few key resources for accessing North Carolina newspapers online. And I also want to share that the images on this page come from three of the state's African American historical newspapers. These can be found at a site called Digital NC that I'll talk more about in just a few minutes. And I also want to add that the images that we have used in today's presentation, um, nearly all of them have come from um, freely accessible online collections that I'll be talking about in a moment. Sorry about that, I had the obligatory slide advance delay. Um, so at the SLNC Government and Heritage Library, we are able to provide access to a wide range of newspaper collections. Some of this content is freely available, as we've said. Some is available online from anywhere um, if you have an SLNC library card, which is available to residents of the state of North Carolina, as well as state government employees. And all of these are accessible in person at our library in Raleigh, North Carolina. So broadly, we purchase subscriptions and provide access to resources that give us access to North Carolina historical and contemporary newspaper content. Some of this content is in the original printed format and other content is available in full text transcription or even a web edition. It depends entirely on the subscription and the, the location and the time period in question. We created this chart on this slide to give you a summary of the main points of access that we provide for our online collections, whether the content is freely accessible or by subscription with a library card. And we hope that it, along with the charts that Taylor shared, will be helpful if you decide to watch this webinar again once the recording is available. Don't worry about absorbing all this information now because the recording will be available. And I'll be covering the details in the next couple minutes. The most important things to keep in mind are that some content is freely, freely available, others available only by subscription. Some content is available in the original image of the paper. Others, again, are available in transcribed text. And the dates available will vary depending upon the paper and the platform or the website. So first, a little bit about some of the key subscriptions that we provide access to that are directly related to North Carolina. Everything I'll mention here is shown on the newspapers page of our website. If you visit this page, you'll want to note the symbols. Um, there are symbols at the bottom of the page and that are next to each of the subscription resources. And you'll want to note that script, excuse me, that symbol because it will tell you whether the content is free requires a library card, or may be available only on site. So first, I wanna highlight a subscription we have through the ProQuest database to two black historical newspapers. These are the Baltimore Afro-American um, with editions in full image from 1893 to 1988. The other paper that we provide access to through this resource is the Norfolk Journal and Guide from 1916 to 2003. Through ProQuest, again, we also provide access to a collection of recent Southeast papers with coverage from 2008 to the recent. We also provide access to a collection of historical North Carolina newspapers from 1751 to 1999 that are available at newspapers.com, and I'll cover this more in depth in just a moment. Next, we provide access to more than 90 regional and local North Carolina newspapers in full image from 1791 to 2021. This access is provided via newspaper archive. We also provide access to a large amount of North Carolina newspaper content through NewsBank. This access includes 20th and 21st century newspaper content in full text from 1985 to the present for more than 100 North Carolina, excuse me, more than 180 North Carolina newspapers. 
The News Bank, News Bank also has a collection um, for the Raleigh News and Observer. This collection includes content from 1910 to 1990 in full image, as well as 1991 to the present with transcribed newspaper text, and then 2005 to current with web edition text. Similarly, um, Newsbank has act, provides us with access to the Charlotte Observer Historical Collection that has full image content from 1886 to 1984, newspaper transcribed text from 1985 to the present, and then for web edition of text from, text from 2007 to the current day. That's a lot of newspaper content that is available um, for researching. The next point of access for North Carolina newspapers is a site called Digital NC. This project is situated at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and has numerous institutional partners that include the State Library of North Carolina. And it also includes local historical and heritage content for all 100 of North Carolina's counties. Digital NC includes a very large collection of newspapers from across the state that have been digitized. The collection includes local community papers, student and campus papers, papers from several specialized and special topic presses, such as those of LGBTQ communities, organizational newspapers and newsletters, and a collection of the state's African American and Native American community papers. Finally, this site also includes a collection of more than a thousand titles published from 1751 to 1898 that have been gathered for microfilm at the State Library and State Archives of North Carolina. All of this content at Digital NC is free and freely available, excuse me, freely available. The collection also includes multiple features for browsing and searching for specific content. Next, I'd like to quickly mention NC Live. NC Live is a statewide library cooperative in North Carolina, and it supports more than 200 public and academic libraries across the state by providing shared access to a wide range of digital resources. In addition to this, in addition to um, newspaper content covering international, as well as New York Times, Washington Post, and Canadian news streams, relevant to the work we do is a digitized collection of North Carolina historical newspapers with content from 1751 to 1999 that includes full images of the original newspaper. More than a thousand papers have been digitized in this collection from papers across the state with most of the content between the year 751 and 1924. NC Live content is available in person at our library with an SLNC card as well as a library card from um, member libraries to the NC Live Consortium. Um, the pay, and again, as I mentioned, they all include original full, full image content. Um, the site is, uh, you can filter by date, search by keyword, and there are more than a, a thousand titles and more than 2 million pages of digitized content in this collection. Um, Taylor mentioned the Library of Congress's Chronicling America project to talk, to talk about their large directory of U.S. newspapers. Another feature of the Chronicling America project was digitization of more than um, 3,500 pages of newspaper content for U.S. newspapers from 1707, 1777 to 1963. Uh, one of the unique features of Chronicling America is the ability to search by ethnicity press. And for this slide, I did conduct a search using the ethnicity search feature, and I searched for African American papers, and I pulled up a long list of newspapers, including the African Expositor um, shown in this image. This is a Library of Congress Chronicling America digitized newspaper project is another resource that is free and freely available. Finally, we want to conclude by sharing a few essentials about our collections and services at the SLNC Government and Heritage Library. If you visit the library's website, you can get the full rundown of our services collection and the online resources that we've talked about today. These include the ability to get help from our friendly and enthusiastic North Carolina research librarians. You can get help from us during business hours in person by telephone via email and via our live chat service, which is available on the website. 
We also have a large collection of historical and contemporary newspapers, as Taylor has discussed, as well as bound print volumes for some of the state's oldest papers. We have a large collection of print publications related to North Carolina history and heritage and the history of the South. The State Library is also the collector of record of North Carolina state government publications, and these are available in print at the library with a sizable collection now available online. We provide access to the subscription resources that we've talked about today, as well as all the tools that we've shared to help you find out how to find newspapers and how to access them. Please visit our website to discover more than we've had time to cover today, and we all hope to be able to help you. We hope that you have enjoyed today's program and that we've given you some information and tools to help you get started in your own newspaper research. Um, please take a moment following the program to complete the survey that's now being shared in chat. And we also want to let you know to please save the dates for part two and part three of our News You Can Use series. On March 10th at 11 a.m., we'll do a deeper dive in two of, into two of the collections that we've mentioned today. These will include the Digital NC Newspaper Collection, as well as the NC Live Historical North Carolina Digital Newspaper Collection. On March 24th at 11 a.m., we'll present part three with a deeper dive into the Newsbank subscription, as well as the Newspaper Archive subscription. We hope that you will join us for these to continue gathering tools for your newspaper research toolkit. And please visit our SLNC events page for more information about upcoming events like today's program. Thank you again. And now I'll turn it back over to Francesca um, and we hope you have some questions for us. Thank you so much, Kelly and Taylor for giving us an introduction to North Carolina newspapers. We're so grateful and thank you so much for all of the information. As we begin the Q&A section of our program, we encourage everyone to please post any questions you have for the presenters in the chat box. Our first question we have from the audience is from Denise. Is there any way for someone out of state to access these resources? That's a great question. So, um... It will depend on the resource. I know a lot of the tools that I mentioned earlier in the presentation, a lot of those are freely accessible um, on the online resources page. Um, some of the databases, it's gonna depend on where you are. Some can be accessed with a library card um, from the state library. If you're a North Carolina resident, you can apply for that. Um, if you're out of state, you might wanna check with a library in your, in your local library, maybe your state library, and see what kind of newspaper databases they might have that contain North Carolina papers. I don't, you know, it never hurts to ask, um, ask them if they provide that. And um, you can also look, if you look at our online resources page, um, there will be a key to the resources in there at the bottom of the page. And it will give you, um, there's a legend that will tell you if, it's a freely accessible source if it you know, needs a library card to use, et cetera. So it depends a little bit on the source. <laughs> Thank you so much, Taylor. Yeah, um, Francesca, I'd like to add to that. Um, of course. So the, yeah, so as Taylor mentioned, the um, newspaper subscriptions, it's certainly always really a great idea, as she said, to consult your local library, university libraries, and um, a state's individual state library for these subscriptions. Um, many of the subscriptions that we purchase and provide access to, such as Newsbank, Newspaper Archive, ProQuest, these are these are large um, these are large subscription databases that um, many institutions purchase access to. So, and also to add that um, if if you happen to find, for example, using our newspaper. Um, using the NNO newspaper index or the East Carolina newspaper index that Taylor mentioned, that if you happen to find an article mentioned in one of those papers, and now you wanna see the actual original, you can contact us at the State Library and our email address will be put in chat in just a second. And um, we are able to provide some assistance with pulling up our microfilm and um, locating if we know the paper and we know the date, 
and we know what you're looking for, we can access the microfilm and for usually a very small fee, um, we, can, we, can help you, we can help you get that resource. Thank you. And speaking of email, um, one of the questions we had was a specific question about North Carolina newspapers locator. But I just want to encourage anyone, if you have a question that's like specific um, for like a particular topic that you would like one of our reference librarians to contact you, please give us your email or email um, Kelly or Taylor or the reference staff. I, we also have another question from Stella. Can a North Carolina Genealogical Society obtain an SLNC library card? So, sure. an yeah, so um, the SLNC State Library card is available to residents of the state of North Carolina as well as state government employees. So if you are a resident of the state of North Carolina, we would be glad to help you get a library card and we can put um, the library card application page in chat now. And, um, and I think that might've been shared earlier in the presentation as well, but there is an online form. And if you are a resident or a state employee, um, please, please apply for a library card. And it usually takes us just a few days to process those applications. And Kelly, I'm glad you mentioned that because we did have a question about how can we get, how can a resident, North Carolina resident, get a, a library card and traveling to the library would be difficult and for a lot of people. And so they were wondering if we had the ability to submit a library card application online or through email. Absolutely. And please, please do that. And um, and once we issue your library card to you, if you go ahead and you look on the online resources page and it opens up to the newspapers collection, um, and the teller just mentioned that as well, there is a little key next to, or a legend next to each of the resources on that page. And you can see which ones are available with remotely with your library card. And I believe that the, um, the symbol for that is just this little blue state of North Carolina map. And if you see that, then you'll know that that resource is available remotely. And there are many subscriptions that we purchase that are available anywhere you can use your State Library of North Carolina card. Thank you, Kelly. And with regards to the library cards as well, um, Lauren asked if she got a library card five years ago, does she need to re-sign up for a library card online at this point. And I would recommend calling, contacting the reference staff yeah. about that. I think that if, yeah, if you would like to um, email us at that email address that was um, put in chat and we can put it right in there again. If you'd like to send us an email and um, let us know that you have an old expired card and include your, um, your name and your, your salient details and, um, and your library card number, We'll be glad to look it up and and see about you know updating your card so you can continue to use it. That's a that's a common occurrence. Cards do have a shelf life; they expire after um, a few years, and so we we are glad to renew them for you. And then one just in regards to library cards and gaining access to the various databases, we had a question. Um, Oh, someone mentioned in the chat that they used to have access to Ancestry.com. And I just wanted to let everyone know that on December 31st, um, we no longer have offsite access, but you are able to come to the reading room Monday through Friday from nine to five or Saturday from nine to one. Do you want to add anything, Kelly? Yeah, that is correct. Um, Ancestry.com. Um, so the background is that um, many libraries like the State Library um, purchase a special subscription. It's called a library subscription to Ancestry.com. It is 
nearly like the personal subscription. It just doesn't have all the family tree bells and whistles, but we have access to all of the relevant um, historical content, census, um, vital records, things like that. So during the pandemic, Ancestry made, um, made that access available to cardholders at subscribing libraries. And, um, and they extended it a couple times, I believe, and then they terminated that access as of December 31st. So, um, but another, another avenue for that, if you would like to access libraries, or excuse me, ancestry.com, is to check in with your local public library, because just like us, there are many local public libraries that also purchase the same subscription. And um, you can visit your local public library for that. Or if you find yourself um, able to come visit us in Raleigh, um, we provide full access to that on site as well. Thank you, Kelly. Um, it looks like we're close to the end of our time, but I have two questions that I would like to um, have answered before we end the program. So we had a question about are most of the newspapers we're talking about on newspapers.com or does each database have different types of newspapers? Or are they like all the same? That is a great question. And um, they are not all the same. Um, there are differences in the, you know, the papers that um, various vendors, you know, contracted to make available online. Um, I would love to know what any overlap might be because I'm, I can't really tell you offhand because we don't really have an easy way to compare these things. Um, but I think that, but th there probably is some overlap, um, but I would venture to say that there, the newspapers probably for the most part are fairly distinct. Um, um, if you happen to be doing some research and using these, these collections and find that you found some papers where the paper and the content is in both for a similar time period, um, I would love for you to share that with us so that we'll have a little data. Um, and at some point, it would be nice if we could, you know, figure out a way to, you know, combine those things, just like Sh Taylor shared those old union catalogs that were done in print. You know, that was, that was an early effort to gather all of the information, but, you know, we don't, we don't have one central place to, to know um, with these subscriptions. Um, but that's a long answer. Um, I think I think it's worth if you're looking for something is it's worth looking at all the resources that you have available to you. And and you can certainly please call on us, you know, to ask because we can very easily look at these databases and fairly quickly and tell you if, for example, a particular newspaper exists in one or where what subscription has it, we can do that so easily. So that's part of what we do every day. So use us as a resource. <laughs> Speaking of using y'all as a resource, this question kind of relates to that because I feel like it's a good question that y'all might answer um, through follow-up, but it's with regards to researching Rowan and Surrey County information, 1760s to 1800s, with a focus on the regulator movement, will there be information in North Carolina newspapers and would there be information in newspapers in other states? So the regulator, the regulator, oh, Taylor, would you like to take that one? Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, I wouldn't ever um, say like exclude newspapers as a um, resource. I'd always just check to see if there might be something in there. Cause you never, you never know until you look. So I wouldn't exclude it, but um, it might take looking again into like some um, some of those papers might be more on um, microfilm or print because they're older, um, but they still might be in a database too. So it might take some looking in different formats. So Kelly, you can, you can add more to that too. Yeah, I, I think I that's exactly right, Taylor. I think that you know you should never say never because as as librarians and researchers. The days that in the back of our mind is, is this idea that, oh no, we won't find that, that you should, you should not listen to that voice and you should, you should do the leave no stone unturned approach because it really can yield, um, yield 
yield good stuff. Um, but I will say for the regulator movement, so the regulator movement um, was in this, um, it, it was in the 1760s. And so, you know, as sort of a pre-revolutionary um, movement in North Carolina. And so if you look at the papers that we had in existence at that time, which would have been um, Davis's Newburn paper, um, the Wilmington paper, and um, I was going to say um, Edenton, I think. Um, those probably would have been the papers that that would be the place to look to see if if it was mentioned. And I I would be surprised if it wasn't, um, you know, because it was big news. There, you know, there there were riots in Hillsborough. And that information, uh, you know, has been recorded in governor's papers and letters and journals. Um, you know, so, so it was, there was a lot going on. And, um, but I would also, in that case, I would probably be curious about fanning out to the papers up the Eastern seaboard um, because what was happening in North Carolina wouldn't have gone unnoticed by, uh, you know, governors in, you know, you know, governors in other colonies, you know, because of the potential for, you know, <laughs> things escalating, for example, the way they did in North Carolina um, with the regulators. So I would definitely fan out for that. But I, I think that you could certainly look through some of those papers to, to see what might be available. Wow, that was a great answer. Thank you so much, Taylor. It was a long answer. And Kelly. Yeah. Um, this is the end of our Q&A. But I would like to um, remind you that you are, please contact us with any other questions that you have, or if a question wasn't answered, our contact information will be made available in the chat. And thank you so much for attending our presentation, News You Can Use, Part One, Introduction to North Carolina Newspapers. We would appreciate you taking the time to fill out our event survey and give us feedback on this program. The survey link is in this slide and in the chat box. As we adjourn, please let's give a virtual round of applause to our speakers, Kelly Agan and Taylor Thompson, as well as our chat tech support. Um, Elise and Lisa Putt, thanks again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you at, the, at other GHL events. Alyssa, I'm sorry, Alyssa put. <laughs>